Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the menu element in Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. The menu element can be used to add a menu anywhere in your content. And when creating custom headers using Avada layouts, it is an integral component. This element allows you to add any existing WordPress menu and display it in virtually any way you can imagine. I'm on the Electrician pre-built here, and in the first video in this Working with Menus playlist, How to Create WordPress Menus in Avada, I created a new menu from scratch and quickly assigned it to the global header. But for this video, to fully demonstrate the menu element, let's delete that instance of the menu element and add it again. The element has five tabs, General, Main, Submenu, Mobile, and an Extras tab. It all starts on the General tab with the Menu option. Here you assign the menu you want to display. The menus themselves must be first made in the usual way through the Menu page, found at Appearance, Menus, from the WordPress dashboard. For more info on this, see the first video in this playlist, How to Create WordPress Menus in Avada. All existing menus are shown on the drop-down in this option. In this case, it has loaded the original Electrician main menu because it is the first one by alphabetical order. Let's just choose our new main menu that we built in the previous video. It's hard to see as it's not styled to suit our dark colours, so let's just quickly go to the main tab, scroll down to the bottom, and set the main menu item text colour here to colour 1, which is white. Yeah, now we can see it. We'll style the rest of this later, so let's head back to the General tab. Under the Menu option is a link to directly edit the menu itself, but my menu is good to go. Next up is the Element Visibility option, and this might be useful in a custom header if you want to build separate desktop and mobile menus, although you could use conditional rendering on the column for that. In any case, I'm doing an all-in-one menu here, so I'll leave the visibility turned on for all screen sizes. If the parent container has position sticky set to Yes, there will also be an option below this where you can choose if you want the element visibility to apply to the normal or sticky state of the parent container, or both. Direction is next, and this of course allows you to choose whether the menu will be horizontal or vertical. Vertical menus are useful on a page with side navigation, in a sticky column, or an off-canvas sliding bar, or perhaps even in a footer, but I'll leave this one horizontal. You can set a margin above and below the element in the next option, but I don't need one here. Below this is transition time. This is the time in milliseconds it takes for any submenu expansion or any other hover transitions to take effect. I think 300 milliseconds is about right. Space between main menu and submenu is an option that allows you to place as much space as you want between the main menu and any submenus. I'm going to leave this empty for my example, but this can be used quite creatively and also in conjunction with the next few options. I'll just quickly add 40 pixels in here, and we can then see the effect straight away in the builder. And now let's look at the next option, Menu Arrows. Here you can choose to have arrows on the main menu, the main menu when it's active, and the submenu. You can choose any number of these options. These are not the drop-down carrots that show a submenu is present, but rather an arrow highlight style, as seen here on the Avada construction website. I'll just come back and turn on submenu arrows, and when I do this, another option appears for their width and height. I'll just make them 20 pixels in both directions. And now when we mouse over the menu, we can see the arrows at the top of the submenu. As mentioned, you could use these options in many ways, but for my example, I'm going to remove the space and turn the arrows off. The last of the options on the General tab are the CSS class and CSS ID fields, with which you can further customize the element with CSS. But we don't need those, so let's move to the next tab, the Main Menu tab. So here we customise the Main Menu. The first option is Minimum Height. Below this, if the parent container was set to Sticky, you would also find the Sticky Minimum Height option. With the Minimum Height option, we can set a minimum height for the menu element itself. This will affect the height of the menu, obviously, but it will also affect background colours. For my example, it's not necessary to set this, as the next option, Align Items, is set to Stretch, and this means the menu will fill the column it's in. With this option you can align your menu items to the top, middle, or bottom of the column, 
using the flex start, center or flex end options, or you can set it to stretch as is done here. The next option here is justification, which aligns the menu element horizontally within the column. You can choose from flex start, center, flex end, space between, space around or space evenly. For my example, I want my menu to be aligned to the right, so I will choose flex end. Following this are the main menu typography options. You can specify the main menu font family, the font size, the line height and the letter spacing, as well as the text transform option for the font. I've made a menu typography set for this example, so I'm just going to apply that set to the main menu typography options as a whole by clicking the globe icon at the top of the option set here and choosing menu. As you can see, that sets the font as work sans, the font size at 14 pixels, and the text transform option to uppercase. Then comes the main menu item padding option. This can be useful if applying borders or hover effects as it affects each menu item, whereas the option below this, the main menu item spacing, affects the spacing between the items. For this example, I'm going to set 40 pixels main menu item padding top and bottom and 20 pixels left and right. In the next option, menu item spacing, I'm going to space the main menu items out by 15 pixels. Okay, that's starting to look better. Then comes the main menu item border radius. You could use this if you had a menu background color. If I just quickly add one, let's say color six, and then come back to the border radius option and add 10 pixels top left and bottom right, we can see the effect on our menu. There are lots of ways to use this depending on your menu design, but for this example, I will delete these values. Following the border radius option is an option called main menu hover transition. There are eight to choose from. As you can see in the description, here you select the animation type when hovering over the main menu items, which is applied to the background color and borders. For my example, I want the center horizontal transition, which we will see in action when I add a background color. If you do have any icons in your main menu items, which you set in the actual menu via the Avada menu options, then here you can choose their position. I don't have any icons presently, so I will leave this as is. In the next option, you can choose the menu icon size, so I'll skip over this one as well. The last options on this tab relate to the color of the menu background and text, and the color and size of any borders and icons. You can change the main menu item background color, the main menu item text color, you can add a border to any side of the main menu items and set its color, and you can set the main menu items icon color. For all these options, you can set both a normal color and a hover color. As you can imagine, using a variety of background and border options will allow you to create several different menu styles. Experiment with these options to see what they look like. I've already changed the main menu item text color to color one, and I'm happy with the transparent background and border colors for my example. But let's change the main menu item icon color to color one, in case we add icons later. Now let's go through the hover slash active states. Here I'll change the main menu item hover active background color to color eight, and change the main menu item hover active text color to color four, as well as the main menu item hover active icon color. So now, as you see, when I hover over the menu items, I get a dark background color and the text changes color as well. Okay, so now we head to the submenu tab. You can skip this of course if your menu doesn't have any submenus. The first option is drop down carrots. I'm going to leave this on yes so it's easy to see which main menu items have submenus. For the next option, submenu mode, you can choose from a normal drop down or a flyout menu. I will stick with a normal drop down. As for a flyout, you can still use this but a more flexible method is to use an off canvas instead. See the how to make a flyout menu with the off canvas builder video for more information on that. Okay, with drop down selected, the next option is expand method. I'm going to leave it on hover. The next option is submenu expand direction, and I want these submenus to expand to the right. You can also choose a submenu expand transition. Fade is the default value, and I think I will just stick with that. You can set a submenu maximum width here with the next option, but in this case, I don't need to change anything here. Okay, then comes the submenu typography option set. Again, there is font family, font size, the line height and the letter spacing, and text transform. 
So this allows you to independently control main and submenu typography. I'm going to apply the menu global typography set to this, but then I'm going to click on the font family to disconnect that option from the set. And now I get a choice of variant, which is what I wanted to change. So with the submenus, I will stick with the normal variant instead of the semi-bold one that was part of the set. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, the next option is submenu item text align. It's set to space between here, which I think looks good, but you can also choose flex start, center, or flex end. Then there is submenu item padding. You can control the padding all around these submenu items with this option, but I think this looks good already, so I will leave this option empty. Submenu border radius affects the whole submenu, and in this case, I might just add five pixels to the bottom left and bottom right values. Okay, scrolling down, box shadow is the next option, and if you select this, you get a further five options with which to control it. I'll skip this for the menu here, but check out the linked how to use the container element and how to use the audio element videos for examples of how box shadows work. Submenu thumbnail size is the next option, and you'll only need this if you have set a thumbnail on a submenu item through the Avada menu options. We look at those in the next video in this series. The next option, Legacy Mega Menu Title Justification, is for if you're using a Legacy Mega Menu, but we recommend using the newer method. See the How to Use the Avada Mega Menu Builder for more information on that. Okay, the last three options here again control the colors of the submenu. I think I will set the separator color to color 2, and add some transparency to the alpha channel to tone it down. Maybe minus 80. And for the background and text colors, I'm going to flip these around and set the submenu background color to color 8 and the submenu text color to color 1. And on the hover state, I'm going to set them to color 4 and color 1 respectively. Let's just check that. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, so that's the submenu tab. Let's move on now to customize this menu for mobile with the mobile tab. The first option is collapse to mobile breakpoint. Here you can choose to not have it collapse at all, have it collapse on small screen sizes, medium screen sizes, large screen sizes, or add a custom pixel value. There are a lot of options here for a lot of scenarios, but for this example, I'm going to choose custom. This displays a new option called collapse to mobile breakpoint. And here I'm going to set it to 950 pixels. So what this means is that the menu will break to the mobile layout menu on any screen that is the size I have set or smaller. If I go to the medium screen view here from the toolbar, we can see it's still a normal menu. But on any tablet that was smaller than 950 pixels, it would also collapse. If we go to the small screen size responsive mode, we can indeed see the menu now loads as a mobile menu. But it needs some styling. I'll just go through the rest of this tab and get it looking how I want. The next option is Mobile Menu Mode. Here you can choose whether the mobile menu is collapsed or expanded on load, and here I will leave it on collapsed. The Mobile Menu Expand Mode is next. You can choose from Full Width Static, Within Column Normal, or Within Column Static. Full Width opens the submenus in full screen width, whereas Within Column opens them within the column width the menu element is in. For my example, I prefer full screen. Mobile menu opening mode is next, and this controls how the submenu should open. Toggle allows several items to be open at a time, while accordion only allows one item to be open at a time. We only have one submenu here, and in any case, I think I'd prefer toggle. After this is mobile menu trigger padding, which you can use to set the padding around your mobile menu's expand and collapse icon. For my example, I'm going to leave this one as is. Then we have the mobile menu trigger background color. I'm going to change this to transparent, and the one beneath it, the mobile menu trigger text color, I will change to color one. This also changes the color of the trigger icon. Mobile menu trigger text allows us to add some text next to the menu icon if we wish. For example, I could type menu in here. But I'll leave that empty for this example and move on to the icons. With the menu element, you can choose both the trigger expand icon and the collapse icon. For these, I'm going to go to the electrician custom font set and set the hamburger and the collapse icon from here. Mobile menu trigger font size is the next option, and I might make this bigger, to about 40 pixels. Now we come to the mobile menu trigger horizontal alignment. 
You can choose from Flex Start, Center or Flex End here. And for my example, I want Flex End, which pushes it over to the end of the column. Another option below this allows you to set the Mobile Menu Trigger button for Width. That's a very niche option that works in conjunction with the Mobile Menu Expand mode within Column Static. So I'll leave that off. The Mobile Menu Trigger Bottom Margin option allows us to set a bottom margin to our Mobile Menu, which if I preview, I can see it needs it here. And so for this option, I will set this to 25 pixels. This pushes the submenus down a little, which looks better here. Then there is an option for the Mobile Menu Item Minimum Height. It's set to 65 pixels by default, and that looks pretty good to me. There is a Mobile Menu Text Align option next, which I will leave on left, a Mobile Menu Indent Submenus option, which I will leave on, and then comes the Mobile Menu Typography options. Once again, I will set this to the Menu Typography set, and disconnect the font family so the variant goes back to normal. And finally, we come to the Styling section. In this case, I'm going to set this up just like the submenus. So in the next option, the Mobile Menu Separator Color, I'm going to make this color 2 and set minus 80 in the Alpha Channel. Then I will change the Mobile Menu Background Color to color 8, and the Text Color to color 1. And on the Active State options, I'll set the Background to color 4, and the Text option to color 1. OK, nearly done. Let's have a look at the final tab, the Extras tab. Here there are the Animation Type options. It's set to None by default, but here if we want, we can apply an animation to the loading of the element. Including None, there are 12 options to choose from. And if you do choose one, you can then control the direction, speed, and offset of that animation. For this, I'm just going to leave it on None. Check out the video on Element Animations for more information on this tab. Alright, I think we're done. Let's just go to Preview and check this out. And here's our final menu. As I mouse over the menu, you can see the background color kick in with a nice transition. If I move to the next menu item, we can see our nice submenu. And if I change to the small screen view, we can see our mobile menu at work here, and our submenus look excellent. OK, thanks for watching. Hopefully you now have a good idea of how you can use the menu element both to assign and design your menus. In the next video in this series, we will look at the Avada menu options back in the menu itself and transform the menu even further. OK, this concludes our video on how to use the menu element. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.